Boom blast. And we are live. This is the Wrap It Up on Blast Raps post game show. This episode of Wrap It Up is brought to you by Clean Cuts Barbershop 2013 Danforth Avenue in the East End of Toronto. Clean Cuts, the multicultural barbers that will always keep you fresh for any and all occasions. So go ski, skipping the crew. And as a wise man once said, tell them that I sent you. Check them out on Instagram at Clean Cuts Toronto or give them a call 416 917 Four eight three three to book your appointment now. <laughs> I'm giddy. I tweeted that I was giddy during that game, maybe in the first quarter. I was just fired up. First off, I was fired up because Marc Gasol was starting, which if you follow us here on the Wrap It Up podcast, you know I've been calling for Marc Gasol to be put in the starting lineup from Jump Street. But hey, I understand. It's okay. It's all right. Not mad at Nick Nurse. I understand what Nick Nurse was doing. He was easing Marc Gasol in, and now we're in a position where, hey, let him cook. Let Marc Gasol cook. I'm so fired up I didn't even introduce myself. My name is Sheldon Alexander. Thank you for joining me once again on the Wrap It Up podcast, which we do live right here on Twitter, at Shell Alexander, following each and every Toronto Raptor game. If you see this link right now on Twitter, click You will end up in Periscope. There's a nice little comment bar on the side. Send in your questions, comments, and concerns. I will read all of that. There will be no concerns after this game, I don't think. That was maybe the best game of the year. The Raptors looked really, really good. I don't know what negative people could have to say about that game, but hey, we'll see. This is a screw face cap that is Toronto, right? Also, live, we have some fun with the people on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, at Sheldon Alexander, you can also send me your comments. I'll read those on the podcast as well. But if you're not able at any time to catch the podcast because it's late, hey, maybe you guys are at a pre-drink party watching the game. Now it's time to go out, but you want to catch the podcast later? All good. We got you covered there as well. As this becomes a podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, just search On Blast Podcast. Like and subscribe us there. And, of course, shouts to the people on YouTube. Again, shouts to everyone. Halfway through the season, we hit our uh, – 1,000 subscriptions mark on iTunes or on uh, YouTube. So really appreciate that. Thanks for all the love sharing in this season, which is the best season in Raptors franchise history. Because without a doubt, you're watching this team right now. That is the best Raptors team we have ever seen in the history of like top to bottom. Once you add Mark Gasol to that starting lineup and you give him room and let him cook, you saw peak power Toronto Raptors in this game. And this is not hyperbole. Raptors win 119-117 against a pretty solid Blazers team. Blazers are a pretty good team, right? They're no joke. Blazers are no joke. They shoot a lot of threes, and that keeps them in a lot of games. Also, the Raptors were close to blowing them out at any point in this game. And CJ McCollum just put on a show. He had 35 points, 7 of 11 from 3. He kept it close to where Dame Lillard was able to shoot himself into a pretty solid game to make this a a very tight, highly contested game at the end. But the Raptors, to to all the people, you know, and I know on the last podcast we were poking fun at Colin Coward for saying, hey, it's it's February and the Raptors look really good. If you actually watch this team, because we know the Colin Cowards of the world and a lot of the Americans don't really get a chance to see this Toronto Raptors team. I mean, more so this year, they might get more of a chance because this was another game that was on ESPN. But the Raptors are such a different team. And we as Raptor fans, we as Raptors media, anyone tied into this organization, we've never seen a Raptors team like this. And what I mean by that is, Top-tier talent, we know Kawhi Leonard is the best player to ever play for this organization, right? Tonight, you saw that. 38 points, but it was how he got the 38 points because there were a lot of plays throughout the game where Kawhi's driving to the basket. He could have had three or four and ones that just weren't called, not to mention just drives to the basket that aren't called as fouls, and he just keeps playing, head down. But it's the fourth quarter where your best players become your best players, right? This is why it's a difference between good and great. It's a difference between all-star and superstar. And just to further emphasize the point, it's a difference between DeMar DeRozan and Kawhi Leonard. Because the Toronto Raptors in this game, while the Blazers were shooting the lights out, 
coming back. If you watch the Raptors in past years, this is a game that the those Toronto Raptors teams would lose because the shooting barrage from McCullum and Lillard down the stretch, old Raptors teams will buckle under pressure. The Raptors went on a run where they didn't score for about what? Like nearly 10 minutes? They didn't have a bucket, right? Here come the Blazers. The Blazers end up tying the game. And then what? Kawhi Leonard just says, give me the ball and get out of the way. At one point, he scored nine straight points for the Toronto Raptors just to give them life, just to get the building back into it, just to get the rest of the team juiced up again. And he capped that 9-0 run, personal nine points, not a 9-0 run, pardon me, but nine straight points for Kawhi. He capped that with a crazy tough lay-in that I still don't know how he got it to go, but he, it was almost like he was floating in the air as he tossed it up and it went in, gets the and one, and that kind of calmed things down for the Toronto Raptors. And the one thing I want to say about Kawhi, he had it going late. He kept the Raptors in the game. He kept, he matched what the Blazers were coming at um, toe for toe, whether it was Dame, whether it was McCollum, Kawhi was matching it. And then you know what? Kyle Lowry looked around and said, oh no, I'm here. I'm good too. Kyle Lowry comes up big with not one, but two tough, tough clutch lay-ins as this game went back and forth, basically for the final, what, three minutes? You had two tough lay-ins from Kyle Lowry. Danny Green, <laughs> Danny Green hit a massive, massive three. And the thing I love about that Danny Green three, first off, Kawhi is looking for him. Kawhi knows exactly where he is. Kawhi has hit, as I mentioned, nine straight points, but still no hesitation to find his buddy Danny Green in the corner for a three. And Danny Green, with no hesitation, pulls the trigger. It's like he was ready to shoot before Kawhi even passed the ball to him. Like, that's the synergy that those two guys have. Danny Green got the ball, and I tweeted this out. No hesitation at all. Why? Because Danny Green wanted all the smoke. And someone writes in here on Instagram and they said they didn't panic like Gasol said after the game. Very good point because in that post-game interview, what Mark Gasol is alluding to is the fact that this Toronto Raptors team is different. You have a bunch of dudes that have been there before. They are not scared by the moment at all. And as I said, they want all the smoke. They're not buckled down. They're not afraid that McCullum is on, is on one because he, he didn't look like he was missing. He finally missed at the end, but for the majority of that game, he was hitting everything moving. And then Dame, we know, right? We know when it's Dame time. Dame Lillard was hitting everything as well. And then something that I don't really like to do, if you listen to this podcast a lot, I never try to blame the refs. I never try to use the refs as an excuse, but the refs were trash. <laughs> There's no way around that. The refs were trash in this game. And going back again to my example of prior Raptors teams, the Raptors would have gotten bogged down by arguing with the refs and the refs being so trash, right? We could have seen this old Raptors team lose because not only are they taking the barrage from Lillard and McCullum, but also the refs would be getting in their head because the refs made a lot of bad calls down the stretch. And trust me, I do not like blaming the refs at all, but seriously, there were too many just calls that made absolutely no sense. Like that Dame Lillard three late. There's 17 seconds left in the game. How can you possibly give Dame Lillard three free throws on that play when we've seen time and time again this season, they've changed the rule in terms of allowing guys to do that pump fake or even the swim through move just to get free throws, right? Kyle Lowry is probably the number one offender of arguing because he's not getting the continuation calls or the shooting free throws. But then that's when the refs decide they're going to make the call to give Lillard three free throws. That was just crazy. Lillard obviously hits the three free throws because, again, it's Dame time. And in a great call by Nick Nurse, he doesn't call a timeout. And you look at that and you think about it and... You catch the defense kind of off guard, but at the end of the day, it's a tie game. You're at home. The way that the Raptors are cooking, if you give any coach an opportunity to say, hey, the game is in the hands of your best player, the clock's winding down, tie game at home, and he's been on one in the fourth quarter, you take that every single time. And 
again, for the people who've been riding with us from the beginning on this Wrap It Up podcast, salute to you guys. But you guys know from the start of the year, all those shots that Kawhi Leonard missed early, I've been telling you guys I wasn't worried because the most important thing was he was getting his shot off. It's the NBA, and it's something I steal from Kenny Smith all the time. It's a make-or-miss league. It's your best player against our best player, and these are NBA guys. They can get their shot off at any point. It's just a matter of good offense sometimes just beats good defense, right? There's nothing you can do. Kawhi Leonard's going to be able, he's shown the ability to get to his spot. It's just make or miss. And he's missed more than he's made right at the buzzer. But with it being make or miss and with Kawhi Leonard being that good, you just know that it's a matter of time that he's going to hit one of those shots because he's too good of a player. The percentages are in his favor that eventually one of those shots that he kept missing early on that had everyone worried about, is he clutch, is he clutch? He's finally going to hit one. And, I mean, that ball hit every single corner of the rim before it rolled in, but he finally hit one, and the crowd went crazy. You saw Kyle's reaction. You saw Kawhi's reaction. And I've I've been telling you guys from the start, the fact that he missed those shots early on in the season, don't worry about it, because clutch isn't just about what happens in that final shot at the end of the game. Clutch is what's happening leading you up to that final possession at the end of the game. And we saw all of that from Kawhi in this one. All of it. Kawhi Leonard, like, he put on a show. And every time you think that this is, these are the moments, guys. These are the moments where if you go back to the the Wizards game before the All-Star break, or you go to the Orlando Magic game that the Raptors lost last week, when everyone was whining about load management and Why does he miss all these games and all that crap? When you watch games like tonight, I don't want to hear anybody complaining about load management anymore. Nobody. (laughs) Because this is why you allow Kawhi Leonard to rest. For these big boy games, for these moments where he just takes the team on his back in the fourth quarter and says, come on, guys, let's go. 38 points and just big basket after big basket after big basket down the stretch. He couldn't be stopped. And aren't you glad that guy's on your team? (laughs) This is why I keep saying, enjoy the ride. Don't worry. Don't get all caught up in the load management talk. Don't get all caught up in what's going to happen next year. Enjoy this season because what we're watching right now is the best Raptors team we've ever seen by a lot. Like, it's not even close. I mentioned Kawhi Leonard in this game, but... I I tweeted this out. It was a big boy game by the Raptors' three main stars. Because, hey, shouts to Pascal Siakam. Pascal Siakam has had a massive year. Pascal Siakam will continue to grow. He will be a great player for the Raptors' future. And he's a great player for the Raptors right now as well. But this Raptors team is about the big boys. And the big boys showed out in this game. I mentioned Kawhi Leonard, 38 points on 14 of 22 shooting also chipped in with five assists. So not only is your guy getting buckets, but he's finding the open man. We also know Kawhi Leonard likes to play a little defense. Three steals for your man's Kawhi Leonard as well. Two of four from three-point land. Then let's go to Mr. Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry has had such an up-and-down season, and everyone was waiting for Kyle Lowry, you know, hey, myself included, I was worried because of the back injections that he took earlier on in the year and I thought that for Kyle Lowry to have big time games how many big time games would he be able to have before the back acted up but what did we talk about last game the addition of Mark Gasol the glow up of Pascal Siakam Kawhi Leonard just being an overall better player than anything else Raptors have ever had that even add in Danny Green's great three-point shooting because we're seeing that pretty much on a nightly basis as well but all of those things culminate in Kyle Lowry being able to pick his spots. He doesn't have to go out and gun for 20 to 25 for the Raptors to win those games. I mean, tonight he put up 19, but he was able to pick his spots. He had his little run with Mark Gasol. I think it was in the third quarter when they ran the two-man game out at the three-point line and Gasol was giving him those hand up, the handoff screens and Kyle knocked down two threes. 
Then, of course, Kyle, late in the game, hit the two big-time layups that I was talking about. He's able to pick his spots and, in spurts, take over games. That's what you need. That's what the benefit of having so much overall top-tier depth does to Kyle Lowry. It makes him, he's able to pace himself a little more. I mean, this is what we're talking about with LeBron, right? LeBron is the best at pacing himself while playing so many heavy minutes. Kyle Lowry played 40 minutes, but what happens now? Hey, Jeremy Lin's able to give him good minutes. Kyle can get a little break while he's on the floor because he's off the ball. Having Marc Gasol, having Kawhi Leonard on your team, that gives Kyle Lowry down the stretch some time where he can rest, where he doesn't have to create every single bucket. Even think about the difference between Marc Gasol and Serge, right? This is not a knock on Serge because Serge Ibaka has played amazing. He's been a great soldier for the Raptors this season. But most of his scoring has come from Kyle Lowry setting him up each and every time. Marc Gasol, <laughs> I mentioned Kyle Lowry's line of 19, 10, and 7. Big boy game for Kyle. Great shooting percentage, 7 of 13 for Kyle. Mark Gasol showed you guys what exactly everyone thought they were getting. Or no, let me let me rephrase that because I don't I don't think the majority of people knew what they were getting with Mark Gasol. I think people thought Mark Gasol was washed. They didn't want to say it. They didn't want to fully admit it. But I feel like a lot of people thought Mark Gasol was washed, and he had a tough year. Memphis, he played really well at the start of the year. Then he got hurt. He was banged up a little. Memphis took a lot of L's. And then Gasol kind of, his play kind of mirrored what the rest of their team was doing. I'm trying to be polite in terms of saying it's a little bit easier to get more juiced up when you're in a winning situation. And I don't think Raptors fans knew exactly what they were getting with Mark Gasol. But basketball heads, basketball heads know the little things, the intangibles, all the, all the things that Mark Gasol has in his repertoire that JV could only dream of. And much like I'm saying, when I make these comparisons, I'm not ripping DeMar DeRozan. It's just Kawhi Leonard is better. I'm not ripping Jonas Valanciunas. I'm just saying Marc Gasol is better. Marc Gasol comes out in this game and has 19 points, 8 rebounds. And you might say, hey, JV could do that, right? But JV is never giving you 6 assists in a game. JV is not giving you 2 steals in a game and a block. Maybe the block, but one of those steals that Marc Gasol got, remember, he's your seven-foot center. He's huge. One of those steals is on C.J. McCollum. C.J. McCollum and Dame make a living off of splitting that high pick and roll. Marc Gasol, as your center, at one point, bent all the way down to pick off the dribble of C.J. McCollum and then dove on the ground to get the steal and find the open guy, sent the Raptors on a fast break the other way. This guy's all over the place. He made so many plays that you don't see many centers make. He took another crazy charge. The fact that he took Nurkic out of this game early by just giving him the business in the first quarter, right? We don't we forget, but to start this game, Gasol had a quick five points, gave Nurkic two fouls in three minutes, and Nurkic had to sub out. That's work. So when we're talking about Gasol needing to be in the starting lineup, it's not a knock on Surge. It's just he adds another dimension to this Raptors offense that makes them so dangerous. When you saw that unit playing together, that team, <laughs> man, that team looks scary. And I can't even be mad at Raptors fans if they're giddy, if they're fired up after watching how that starting lineup of Kyle Lowry, Danny Green, Kawhi, Pascal, and Marc Gasol looked. Because the offense was just cooking. And it took an epic shooting night from C.J. McCollum for this game to not to be a blowout. But then it took the grown-ass Raptors, the matured Raptors that Masai Ujiri has, has brought to the table to hold on to the lead. I mean, not even hold on to the lead because they, they, the Blazers were winning at certain points. Like That back and forth late in the game, anybody could have won that game. It's just the Raptors, didn't. they bent, but they didn't break. <laughs> there's a nice cliche that I'll get you guys to before I get to some comments because there's a lot of comments, so keep them coming. Greatly appreciate it, guys. And, hey, I want to hear from you. What do you guys think after that win? And we'll go through the game and just certain things that happened during the game as well. But I just felt like the end of that game was something we needed to talk about right away. And also the big boy performances from the Raptors, three 
vets, three stars in terms of Mark Gasol, Kawhi Leonard, and Kyle Lowry. That is what Masai Ujiri envisioned when you're putting this team together. When you added Mark Gasol at the deadline and you look at what this team can be, you saw everything of that, everything of that and more. Because everyone in the starting lineup played well. Danny Green even gave you 11 points on three of four shooting from three. Siakam had 16. He had a very solid game as well. Your your starting unit looked so well in this, looked so good in this game. I don't know how you change it going forward. I know we've been talking about keeping the starting lineup fluid and, you know, you're playing the matchup and maybe Gasol started just because Nurkic was a better matchup for him than Serge. I don't know, man. I think you got to get that out of here. And Gasol's just got to start because he just adds another wrinkle that this team hasn't seen. But the, watching him and Lowry work that two-man game, watching Gasol, one of his six assists, he's hitting Lowry on a backdoor cut. It's, that two-man game is crazy. It, it's crazy. And that's the other part. Kyle's Lowry scoring is now helped because there's someone else that can get Kyle easy buckets. It's not all just Kyle barreling to the line or barreling to the basket trying to get fouled. It's not just Kyle, you know, on a swing pass getting an open screen. No, Gasol is able to find him if he's cutting. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Let's get to the comments here before I get too far behind, although it looks like I already did get too far behind because that's how many people are in both chats right now. And I greatly appreciate it. Uh, but we'll start on Twitter. Someone says, great work as always, brother. A win like this is more valuable than a blowout win. It's an interesting point. And I think that the big thing, if you're a Raptors fan, again, I've talked about it on the last podcast. I talked about it last year. One of the stats that I look at going forward in the playoffs, it tells me a lot about what a team will do come playoff time, is your record in games decided by three points or less. That's a big boy stat to me because it tells you how well a team handles pressure, how much they handle the adversity of a comeback, or the adversity of watching the other team hit a big time shot, and how are you going to react to that, right? The Toronto Raptors... I talked about it from last game, and obviously they just won this game by, what, two points? So that moves their record to 11-4 and four this season in games decided by three points or less. Second on that is the Denver Nuggets. The Raptors have the most wins in games decided by three points or less. Second is the Denver Nuggets at 10-2. and two. And then the next most wins, oh, Brooklyn has 10, but they're 10-7. and seven. So they just play a lot more close games than anyone else. But if you look at the other teams, Milwaukee's only five and five, right? Sixers are pretty good at nine and five, but the Celtics, three and five. If we go to the Western Conference, Golden State, I mean, I don't really count what they do in the regular season because we already know they're not even really trying in the regular season, but they're only five and six. The Thunder, five and five. The Blazers, three and six. The Rockets, four and four. So what I'm telling you is the Raptors at an 11-4 and record. And again, some of those games are even without Kawhi Leonard. But what it tells you is that the Raptors are ready for the playoffs. Those two things, what your team does in close games, and then also what your team does on the road. And, I mean, the Raptors' record is so good that obviously they play well on the road. They're 19-11, and so you're a really, really, really good road team. There's only what? One other team that has more, two other teams. The Raptors are third in road wins behind Golden State and Milwaukee. So again, road wins and what your team does in games decided by three points or less. Those are good signs to me for what you will do come playoff time. Also, there's this thing called the eye test. And my eye test tonight tells me that the Raptors are a pretty good team. Let me get to some more comments here on Instagram as I'm scrolling through. Shout out to all the people here. A lot of people just waving, saying what's up. Shouts, appreciate you guys. Uh, DJ Raymond says Kawhi is a G. Hey, I'm not here to argue with that. (laughs) Another comment says basketball gods have Kawhi, gave Kawhi that role after the refs tried to snatch that game from us. (laughs) I mean... Again, that shot hit every part of the rim. Looked like it was going to bounce off and just rolled in. It was great to see. Uh, Someone else, someone says, uh, big up, Sheldon. What's up to you? Uh, Diversified youth. Hey, interesting name. Cool, cool, cool. Another person says, 
Sheldon, we saw the trade off to Abaka coming off the bench. His energy is not the same. Here's the thing. Serge didn't play well in this game, right? But I think the pluses of Gasol in the starting lineup, the added ball movement from Gasol being in the starting lineup is the win. Because you got to remember, come playoff time, it's going to come down to who your best players are anyways. And as Webster told you on our Ball on Blast podcast, even Bellamo was telling you on a prior Wrap It Up podcast, What's more important other than who's starting is who's finishing. And I think what we saw tonight, Gasol definitely should be finishing most games, right? Like we're seeing that Gasol is better than Serge Ibaka. I think we knew that already, but for some people, the uninformed probably needed to see that through a little bit. Like he just brings more to the table. Serge Ibaka coming off the bench, I think that's just mental, right? It's a mental and it's a physical adjustment too because if you're used to starting, and especially as you get up in age, just your whole routine changes. How you warm up, the fact that you're warming up, and then if you're starting, cool, the game starts and you're playing. But if you're coming off the bench, you got to get used to the fact of warming up, but then sitting back down, maybe getting cold, and then checking back into the game. It's just a completely different adjustment. But the thing that makes me know that Surge will be okay is because of how Nick Nurse was playing him off the bench. And he was playing him a lot with Kyle Lowry. He was even still working the pick and roll with Lowry and with Jeremy Lin. Serge was just missing those shots. And we've seen him hit those shots all year. So I just have faith that he will continue to hit those shots. He was 0 for 5, didn't hit a field goal in this game. But he missed at least three of those shots from his elbow spot, which we know he's just been money at the whole season. So I trust that those shots will continue to fall for Surge. And again, what Gasol brought to the table in terms of adding extra ball movement, like look at your starting lineup. Kyle Lowry had 10 assists. Gasol had six assists. Kawhi had five assists. Siakam had four assists. That is just telling you that the way that your team is playing, the way that your your starters are playing, the offense is cooking. The ball is moving. And that is what Nick Nurse has wanted to see from the get-go. And I mentioned this, his move of putting JV and Serge at the five spot and running this offense, it's built to have your big man at the top of the key conducting things, making things work, making key passes, having the offense run through him. It's the perfect fit for a guy like Marc Gasol. So if the trade-off is Serge struggles a little bit coming off the bench, I feel like the reward of what Gasol brings to everyone else in the starting lineup is worth it. Uh, Let's see. Another comment here says, wow, uh, we won, but Nick Nurse is a joke. Sometimes why play McCaw with the starters for extended minutes when we were struggling offensively, basically four on five on offense? I see the point of what this person's saying on Instagram, but here's what I think was happening. I think they wanted to keep one of McCaw or Norman Powell on the floor with the starters because someone had to be running around chasing CJ McCollum off of screens. And you don't want that to be Kyle Lowry. So why not have it be Patrick McCaw for some time? Why not have it be Norman Powell for some time? And their minutes seem a little odd because the rest of the starters are out there. But literally for defense, you need someone to be chasing McCollum just chasing him around. You don't want to wear out Kyle Lowry by running through screens because that's all McCollum was doing. And that's a tough guard. So I really don't mind if you give McCaw some extra minutes or you give Norm a little extra burden with the rest of the starters, but he's just there to make McCollum or Dame Lillard work a little bit harder. And the benefit of that is then when you come back with Kyle or you come back with Danny Green, they're more fresh than McCollum and Lillard because McCollum and Lillard have just been working off of a fresh guy coming off the bench, right? So to me, I'm not mad at that move. I'm not mad at that move at all. I see the point, but I'm not mad at the move. Uh, Let's see what's going on. Negative thing to say is the refereeing, but great game. Great win for the Raptors. Totally agree. Totally, totally agree. More comments. The best thing about this Raptors team is a fact that they don't panic. That is so true. And that also will be a big thing heading into the playoffs because I mean, you assume the playoffs are going to be close games. 
You assume the playoffs are played more in the half court, and we're seeing the Raptors' half court execution improve so much more than it was at the start of the year. And that's also why I feel like having Marc Gasol on the floor also helps things because he gives you just way more options. Serge Ibaka's success is off the pick and pop and off energy. Marc Gasol, he can also give you the pick and pop. He can also give you the pick and roll, but you can also dump it to him in the post and he can just get busy and get a bucket. He can also step out and hit a three, which Serge has really struggled with for the past, what, like six weeks? So again, what the Raptors are doing and how they look in the half court and I keep telling you guys about the adjustment that Nick Nurse has made, for the most part, in crunch time, getting Kawhi Leonard the ball closer to the free throw line, as opposed to having him get it at the top of the key, where he has to dribble, 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 and maybe beat a guy. He can get it from the free throw line, one dribble, either get his shot off, or one dribble and get to the basket. Either way, this team is legit. Someone says... uh, Kawhi needs to get way more respect from the... I'm assuming this is for the, from the refs. I totally agree, but I just think he's so strong. And so every time he goes to the basket, he's taking the contact. And so the refs almost... He's taking the contact and scoring. So it's almost difficult for the refs to make the call every single time down the floor. But literally, you could make the call every single time down the floor. I definitely think that he should be shooting more free throws. I mean, and he shot eight in this game. But he easily could have shot, what, another six? He had at least add in a couple more and ones, that's for sure. Uh, More comments, people getting into the fact of the refs, the crew was embarrassing to the game. Uh, More comments, someone said, I watched the ESPN broadcast. Hubie Brown was giving the raps massive props. Hey, all you want is to be respected by Hubie Brown, right? If there's one guy that knows basketball who will give you the ins and outs, give you the X's and O's in terms of what's going on in the NBA, it's Hubie Brown. So if he's all right with the Raptors, what's anybody else going to say that's bad about the Raptors, right? More comments here from Instagram. Someone said, it didn't look like Lowry fouled Lillard at the end of the game. I totally agree. I don't think that was a foul. And also further to that point, I think this year they... The whole purpose the NBA was trying to put out there was that they were trying to take away that fake pump fake jumping into defenders. They were trying to the unnatural shooting motion. Dame Lillard wasn't trying to shoot a three in that instance. He was trying to jump into Kyle Lowry, who jumped away from Dame Lillard. It was just a bad call. But it's also one of those things where, hey, the basketball gods, ball don't lie. (laughs) As the wise words of my guy Rasheed Wallace. Um, a lot of complaining about the raps. I want to stay away from that. Like, yes, the rap, the refs suck. Cool. I agree with you. The refs were terrible, but let's focus in on more of the Raptors. Um, someone does make up a good point though. So many bad calls, but Kawhi just kept going. Kawhi didn't get bogged down. He just kept fighting. It didn't stop him from going to the basket. It didn't make him settle. He just kept going to the cup. Same thing for Kyle Lowry. That lay-in Kyle Lowry hit late to give the Raps a lead, like that was a tough, tough lay-in. He drove into the lane and hit the floater over Nurkic. That's a tough basket to make. But again, Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry is ready. Um, Let's see, more comments here on Instagram. Uh, Probably the best offensive execution in the clutch this season. I agree, because... Kawhi Leonard had the nine straight points, and he had a little bit of everything. He had fadeaway jumpers. He had drives to the basket. He had and ones. He had plays where he found Danny Green for three. Then you saw some from Kyle Lowry, where Kyle Lowry was driving to the basket, not settling for jumpers. Also, a big thing that sometimes I would get on Kyle Lowry for, driving to the basket to try to get a layup versus driving to the basket and trying, trying to get fouled. And I thought Lowry was driving to the basket, trying to actually make the basket, which was super important in this game because, as we discussed, the Raptors weren't getting a lot of calls. Let's see another comment here on Instagram. Uh, So De Niro says, One word to describe this Raptors squad? Scary. Funny how Milwaukee is picking up Powell. They realize that if they have to play us in the playoffs, they won't beat us. (laughs) 
I mean, I don't know really what their reasoning was, but yes, Pau Gasol worked out a buyout, and it looks like he will be joining the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, I don't know how that will affect them, how he fits into that rotation. It'll be interesting to see for sure, but I'm not really sweating Milwaukee getting Pau Gasol. Like, that's not a big deal to me. I still think we talked about it, shameless plug, on our Ball on Blast podcast, which we do, which uh, goes live every Friday morning. It's more of an NBA talk, but we were talking about how we would rank the Eastern Conference teams right now. And I said, I would take the Raptors first, and it's because of the veteran presence that the Raptors have in terms of Kawhi Leonard, Danny Green, Kyle Lowry, Mark Gasol, as opposed to the unknowns of the Bucks. Giannis hasn't won a playoff series yet, but you know Giannis is going to ball, most likely, right? Middleton, don't know what's going to happen with him in the playoffs. Uh, Brogdon, uh, Bledsoe, Brooke Lopez, who knows what those guys are going to do come playoff time. So I'm cool with the Raptors. I'm not even worried about what any other team is doing. The way that I look at this Raptors team is the Eastern Conference Championship is theirs to lose. And just for those who might be thinking this is uh, bandwagon jumping or uh, I guess hopping on the bandwagon, check the receipts, go back to the previews, episode one, wherever you're listening to this podcast. And when we talked about who was going to win the Eastern Conference, just go back and see the things that were said there. Uh, Let's see what else is going on here. Uh, More comments here. There's so many comments on Instagram. Shouts to you guys for, for tuning in for sure. Um, someone says, I was worried when Kawhi kept grabbing his shoulder, but he stuck it out. Clutch Kawhi. Every time Kawhi Leonard falls on the ground, I get nervous. <laughs> Every time he drives to the basket and gets fouled or like slides into the front row or the cameras, the camera area, I get worried. So when he made that play and he fouled whoever that was on the breakaway and then grabbed his left shoulder, my first thought was, that doesn't look good. My second thought was, oh, well, at least it's his left shoulder, <laughs> which doesn't really matter. I mean, it matters, but at the end of the day, he doesn't have to shoot with his left hand. So luckily for us, as Raptors fans, Kawhi was all good. More comments here. Uh, someone, or just more people worried that Kawhi got hurt. More comments, so this person says, Kawhi showed real emotion on that game-winning shot. All in caps, it says, confirmed, he's staying, LOL. (laughs) This game of will Kawhi stay is so much fun. I'm enjoying all the back and forth of Raptors fans trying to like read into his body language or read into his (laughs) post-game. I find it really funny. Also because I've stated... I'm not worrying about that until the offseason happens. Whatever. Enjoy this ride. Like, that was a great, great game. And I know the Raptors almost lost. I know there were certain points where the Raptors probably should have blown out uh, the Blazers in this game. Because there was a moment where the Raptors were cooking in that second quarter. And Kyle and, and Marcus Hall had it going. The Raptors were up big. They were up, what, 16 points at one point in the second quarter. And hey, I thought they should have blown them out. But the Blazers shooting, and in this new NBA, people have talked about, and I think we've gotten used to the fact that a 16-point lead in today's NBA isn't the same as a 16-point lead last year or two years ago because the pace of play in the three-point shooting is so much higher now that teams are able to come back quickly. And if you're a good shooting team or a great shooting team like the Blazers are, you can erase a 16-point lead like it's nothing. And we saw that tonight. That's what they did. Uh, Someone else we got to give a shout out to is Jeremy Lin. Because Jeremy Lin came off the Raptors bench. And I know he only had eight points on four of eight shooting. Most of that, I'm pretty sure six of it came in the first half. His minutes that he had in the first half. But Jeremy Lin has fit in seamlessly. And he's kind of given the Raptors what they need from Fred Van Fleet. Which is just consistency. He's, he's always under control. He's never he's not trying to do too much. He ta- he's taking what the defense gives him. He's driving to the basket, and he's always under control. Even if he's getting fouled, it looks like he's under control enough that he can gather himself in the air and still finish the shot. 
whether the refs called the foul or not. But it's consistency. He's moving the ball. He's confidently just taking whatever the open shot is. And he's giving the Raptors solid minutes off the bench. And it's crazy to think that he he hasn't looked out of place yet. And he's been put into big-time spots with the Toronto Raptors. So, shouts to Jeremy Lin. I think he's been really good. Uh, the bench, not much scoring from the bench in this game. But when your starters are all cooking like that, all Raptor starters in double figures and what three all four of the Raptor starters over 16 points so huge shouts there in terms of what the Toronto Raptors were able to do um let's get to some more comments here because people are still are still coming up big here on the podcast whether it's live on Twitter or on Instagram uh this from Twitter (laughs) someone says man the referees want us to lose that's the negative on this game that's the baddest officiating. Uh, another comment on Twitter, McCullum was powerful, but Kawhi was more effective. Totally agree. Uh, more comments here on Instagram. I like the hustle from the raps. Gasol, Larry, and McCaw diving for the ball. It's true. And they kept saying it on the broadcast. It's infectious. Great defense, everyone hustling, everyone running around. It's really infectious getting to see what the Toronto Raptors were doing in terms of, okay, you have Kyle Lowry, that play where it was a kickball and you couldn't really tell before they went to the replay, was it a kickball or not? But when you look at it and what happened, either way, Kyle Lowry's on the ground. He's trying to get that ball. And you got to give the Raps credit because they hustle. And once you see one guy get down and you see one guy, you know, willing to sacrifice and give up his body, for the team on the defensive end, everybody else wants to do it too. More comments here. Us having Kawhi is like when Tony Stark said, we have a Hulk. <laughs> That's for the comic book heads, I guess, right? Uh, Kawhi wouldn't be afraid of Thanos. <laughs> Another comment says, my only worry is Abaka having his feelings, Abaka in his feelings, not starting. His energy seemed different tonight. Uh, I mean, it's just an adjustment. I think Serge will be fine. Serge will be fine. I think even early in the season when he was going back and forth with JV, he played fine. And Serge knows that there's going to be moments, like the beauty of this Raptors team and the Raptors depth is that there's going to be a moment where everybody's number is going to get called because that's what the matchup dictates. And the Raptors have such good players that, hey, there might be a game where you need Gasol and Serge to be in the lineup just to match up with another team think like Denver when the Raptors played and they have Jokic and Plumlee playing a lot of minutes right there will be games like that where you never know what's going to happen what is uh you could see a lineup maybe where you talked about it last game where you see Gasol uh Serge and Pascal in the lineup like you just never know Or maybe a team goes super small and you need Serge to play the five and the matchup just dictates Serge is going to get his minutes. This is what, that's where Nick Nurse always switching up the lineup will help you. I still think that you start with Gasol and adjust from there, but Serge will be fine. Serge is a vet. Serge is a team player. He'll be okay and he'll be able to figure out how he can still contribute. And if he's on the court with the bench mob, bench mob i said that out of habit but if he's on the bench if he's on with the rest of the bench he can be that lead scorer once jeremy lynn gets used to the pick and pop the same way that kyle lowry did serge will still be able to get his buckets not worried about serge Ibaka. but again uh, there's more thanos talk which i think i've maxed out on my knowledge of comic books like all that stuff's not really my thing but there's a lot of Thanos talk going on right now in the Instagram chat. <laughs> so I'll just leave that to you guys. Uh, more comments, though, on Instagram. Mark did his thing and started this game. The way that Gasol came out early set the tone. He came out and he meant business. Sending Nurkic to the bench early was a thing, but also just how active he was and showing off his different moves. Because, again, I think people thought Mark Gasol was washed. But then you see him work the pick and roll with Kyle Lowry and the way that he's getting to the basket, he didn't look slow-footed to me. 
the other part of Marc Gasol's game that I think will surprise a lot of people, shouts to Leo for bringing this up, but his pick and roll defense is way better than most people anticipated. I mean, it's way better. You could even argue it's better than Serge. But what he was doing, because far often what happens with big guys on the pick and roll, they'll come out, but they're half coming out, right? Like they're coming out just for show. What Gasol was doing on the pick and roll was he's coming and he's forcing the defender to over dribble because he is now coming out hard and playing defense and forcing you to make moves. He's not just half faking and letting you dictate what he's going to do. He's forcing you almost like a, a forced double team, forcing you almost into a turnover, forcing you to show your handle, but also just forcing plays. And that's how you force turnovers. The Raptors defense, that lineup, man, the defense that that lineup shows, <laughs> that's how you're going to win in the playoffs. That is how you're going to win in the playoffs. Uh, someone says, real heads know. <laughs> exactly. The real heads know. It's so true. More comments here on Instagram. For all those people that complained about getting rid of JV, it's totally true, man. I tweeted it out. I remember all of y'all that were questioning is how much better is Gasol than JV? Like, guys, it's not a conversation. It's not. And again, it's not a knock on JV. JV is a solid, solid big guy. But Gasol just does a lot more. Gasol can affect the game in a lot more different ways, even if he's not scoring. And tonight we got a glimpse of a little bit of everything. Because he was scoring, and he did it in multiple different ways. But he still played defense. He still was passing the ball. And he was still grabbing rebounds. All I'm saying is, Marc Gasol joins in with a bunch of other Raptors. We talk about it all the time. Kawhi, Danny Green, uh, Kyle Lowry, Siakam. These are all guys that can affect the game in multiple ways. It's not just about scoring. And that is what makes the Raptors team so good. Because their guys, their best players, can affect the game in totally different ways. They don't have to be scoring. And then when you look at a team like the Celtics and you look at the problems that they're having, if Jason Tatum isn't scoring, how is he? How else is he affecting the game? If Kyrie, Le if Kyrie Irving's shot isn't falling, how else is he affecting the game? If Gordon Hayward's shot isn't falling, how else is he affecting the game? That's what I mean when you watch different teams in the NBA and why certain teams fit, why the chemistry is good on certain teams, and why the Celtics are in a situation they are now. I don't think they're done because I feel like they have enough talent that sometimes the talent can override the lack of chemistry. I mean, we saw that with LeBron James last year. LeBron James dragged a garbage team to the NBA Finals, not because there was chemistry, not because he was easy to play with, because he was just so good. And the talent overrode the lack of chemistry and he was able to succeed. The Celtics as a group have all that talent. It's just how are the matchups going to work in the playoffs? That's what the Celtics season is going to come down to. It's going to be matchups. It's going to be matchups. Someone says, uh, big up all the ballers out there. For sure. That's what we mean when we talk about the real heads. For sure. Shout to the Raptors fans, but the real ballers know when we're talking about things on different level, they'll appreciate when I'm talking about, oh, Mark Gasol sets hard screens, or, oh, Mark Gasol's pick and roll defense is so good. The way that he trapped that defender off the screen, just know, I know there's people there that appreciate that. And hey, shouts to you guys. Uh, someone, another comment on Instagram, JV doesn't have any basketball IQ. I'm not going to say that. I don't think he doesn't have any basketball IQ. I just think Mark Gasol's basketball IQ is just on another level. What's the famous line that, you know, we love to say all the time here on all our podcasts? There's levels to this shit. And Mark Gasol's just on a different level than JV is. No worries. No problems. It's all good. Raptors fans, let me know what you think, though. How are you guys feeling after this game? The Raptors... That's a big win for them. That is a good win. You saw everything from that Raptors team in terms of how they were able to get out to a big lead, how they were able to bend but not break, how they were able to react to adversity in such a close game. I just think it was it was really a good look for this Toronto Raptors team, and they they hit every test. 
how you handled a last second a last second situation how they played defensively because even when they had that scoring drought they didn't stop playing defense and that part was really key because it kept the game close until Kawhi started hitting shots but again shout out to all you guys so many good comments here on instagram i apologize as always for not being able to get to all of them but appreciate you guys so much and of course we will be back again on the wrap it up podcast on sunday following hey a game in detroit against our old friend Dwayne casey and the detroit pistons that should be a lot of fun i'm assuming there'll be a lot of raptors fans in detroit for that one on sunday look forward to being there with you guys after the game again on this what we call the wrap it up podcast which as always you can find live on twitter at shell alexander following each and every toronto raptors game same thing for instagram where we take your questions and comments there as well. And of course, on the same feed, if you're listening to the podcast, just scroll up because we got a brand new episode of the Ball on Blast podcast, which is with my guy, Andrew Webster. And what we do there is we talk about everything going on in the NBA. We deep dive into Kyrie Irving's battles with the media and the Boston Celtics struggles. Can they turn things around? We talked about LeBron James he to blame for the Lakers demise will the Lakers miss the playoffs what should they do with the LeBron and the rest of this season as they battle it out for eighth in the west we also do a pretty fun segment at the end which we call ask on blast which ends up just being uh basically a, a segment where we just recommend things whether it's music whether it's movies or tv it's a pop culture segment essentially which we do at the end we talked about the oscar shouted out spike lee had a lot of fun at the end of that podcast but tune into that again that's the ball on blast podcast wherever you found this the wrap it up podcast just do a little scrolling and you can find the wrap the ball on blast podcast as well greatly appreciate you guys thank you again really appreciate the live crew you guys are the hosts with me while i'm doing this couldn't do the show without and getting your comments and your input each and every night and we got a solid crew of regulars that are here and i totally appreciate you guys tuning in and letting me know what's going on exactly like this comment that says have you seen the score in the hawks bulls game and i actually did while i was rambling and i was gonna point it out and then i didn't want to get too flustered so i let it go but as i look at the score now the bulls won 168 to 161 in quadruple overtime <laughs> what i gotta check out those highlights to see what happened in that game but the bulls and hawks playing a four overtime game that's just crazy the nba is truly the best it's the best league so much fun i don't know that raptors game if you watch that raptors game and you didn't enjoy yourself that's a you problem i don't know you got issues you got issues you don't like fun things <laughs> Hopefully, though, this podcast was fun for you as well. And I want to continue to shout out the people on um, on iTunes that follow us there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And, of course, rate us there. Shout out to the people that are liking and subscribing. Our day ones on uh, SoundCloud. Special shout out to you guys. Really appreciate that crew. Again, let me go back to SoundCloud right now because what I always like to do is I like to go on SoundCloud because they have the feature where you can see what cities people are listening from which i find super interesting because well last time people wrote in saying that they were watching the ball on blast or sorry the wrap it up podcast they were watching the wrap it up podcast from the philippines and we had uh one person watching from greece as well so that was cool uh but every once in a while i'll go to the analytics from uh on soundcloud the SoundCloud, you can see where everyone's listening to. So I'm going to shout out some places there. I see some people listening from Scarborough. Shout out. Shout out to the people in Mississauga. And of course, the next highest, I see big ups to the people in Edmonton and Vancouver and Surrey, BC as well. Shout out to the people in Oakville, a little closer to Toronto. But the point is, Raptors fans, you guys are all over the place, all over the world, and of course, all over this great country. And shouts to you guys for joining in on this the wrap it up podcast as we continue to celebrate and enjoy the best season in raptors franchise history 
Huge shout to you guys. Huge shout to the YouTube posse. Keeping that conversation going 24-7 as well. I really appreciate it. And I don't take this for granted. I have so much fun doing this because... I used to watch games, like the reason why this exists is because last year, games would end. Games like this, crazy games like this would end, and I remember not being able to watch a post game anyway. Like there was just nothing to watch, like you'd flick around on channels and they'd just go into other programming. And I always felt like, oh man, I want to like digest more content about that game because that game was crazy. And so that's really was the origins of this podcast. So. I don't take it for granted at all what this has turned into, and I really appreciate you guys so much because in the wise words of our guy Meek Millie, I really did used to pray for times like this to rhyme like this. This is the Wrap It Up on Blast Raps Post Game Show. As always, unpolished and unapologetic. Until next time, see ya. Boom, blast.